We're here today with Heinrich Hafeni, founder of Hafeni Tourism Group. Thank you so much for making the time to meet with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for making time to uh, connect with me and yeah. Nice what exactly does Hafeni Tourism Group do? Hafeni uh, Tourism Group Namibia is a Namibian uh, tourism company that is uh, wholly focused on uh, cultural township uh, uh, tourism, uh, like they go taking tourists into the local uh, communities around Namibia, where we introduce uh, tourists to the real Namibia. Um, I grew up in the township and, uh, um, and uh, having worked in Africa, uh, 14 countries in Africa as an overland tour guide, uh, there's always been uh, tourists always wanted to experience also going to the local villages, the local community where the ordinary people of uh, different uh, countries that I will travel and I will organize extra activities to dinner with the chief in Malawi, um, going to the Maasai people in the village in Arusha and try. So then I, I resigned and I have to start to concentrate my business more on the townships and making the township a favorite and attractive destination where tourists get to be enhanced and to really experience the real Namibia. Besides seeing the wildlife and the beautiful desert and the terrain and the landscapes and but we are now the cultural you know you know the part and I think township focus experience real Namibia. So that's what Afeni is about and so it's an activity that you can do. What is it I can do when I'm in Swakopmund, Namibia? Okay, Swakopmund is such a very German town. And you're like, oi, is everybody living like this? And but the township of Mondesa obviously give it an African, uh, you know, experience of how ordinary Namibians live in these cities. So I get to take this uh, tourist to experience a different part of our beautiful Namibia. Same as in Vintuk in Karatura Township. Obviously, you see the nice cosmopolitan Vintuk and the German historical buildings, but there's also an, a community where local people uh, live, okay, middle income, poor community, and people staying in shacks. But at the end of the day, we tell, uh, in the midst of it all, uh, Hafen is more about taking you to the township, telling you a positive story about Namibia 30, almost 30 years later. And uh, yeah, the melting pot of uh, Namibia. Yeah. So, for those that don't know, what is a township? The township is a community. Okay, uh, during obviously Namibia, we've experienced uh, apartheid, um, and uh, obviously there were segregation. There were communities. There were there were white communities and there were black communities. And mostly the communities that were black people used to live were regarded as townships. It's obviously it's another. Uh, location. It's a location in a city, and uh, majority of those where black people will be staying will be regarded as township. And as a result, until today, many of those communities are still regarded as a township. That's why when you go to South Africa, you will hear about township tour. Automatically, you know that you're going to a former previous disadvantaged communities. That uh, as a result, but today obviously it's a positive. It's not taken as a negative. But obviously, something that is embraced. I live in the township of Mondesa and uh, come and experience a township flavor. So, some of uh, um, the hood, the Kasi, you know, get to experience the, the, I mean, I, I think, you know, you've got your informal settlement, uh, which is like a shack where there's no sanitation. And uh, maybe you mentioned like Ibera, for instance, which is a different one. But it's also, it's more in the hood. The township is the hood where the, or local people live is you know like a village in a city or but yeah that's basically the township is just i want to go to the township i want to see the local people i've seen enough uh, this reminds me of a bit of berlin let me go where's the, the local shabin you know where's the local nyamachoma at the, the you get, that's like a township flavor that's where you get it so that's what we yeah so what would you say inspired you particularly to move from doing the overland tours and general tourism and for you to decide to focus specifically on this? I, I think when um, growing up, I grew up in a township and uh, 
my mother was a domestic worker and my grandmother would be a cleaner. And uh, as a firstborn, I would always look at these two ladies and um, they would obviously make sure that there's food at home all the time. And now uh, I will be inspired later to say that I'll be a breadwinner. As you know, I obviously get a job and later on you get influenced by watching documentary of entrepreneurs and, and uh, by then said, I want to go an entrepreneur. And, um, but, and then you get introduced to tourism and you start working in the industry as a dishwasher when I first started off and I became a waiter while I was still at school and I became an, uh, a cook in the kitchen and safari guide, a cook and I catering. So I got a, and I like service. I think I realized that I'm a service, I, mean, I belong in the service industry and, uh, and when I was guiding in Africa and, and so because of my passion for service delivery and, uh, and I, I said, okay, I'm going to start a business in the, uh, you know, tourism and hospitality and something that I know. And yeah, so I think, uh, I think it's later, uh, I become great. And I think you look at the community where you're from and said, I want to be a champion of my community. I want to go back and help develop positively my community uh, where I can be able to bring tourists to the local townships and obviously when I started off it was a bit difficult to uh, uh, have uh, the tourists in the township because they will take pictures and the local people selling at the informal markets like why are these people taking pictures of us and 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 then you have to do an education and awareness about tourism and what is it about and and that I will tell the locals, I said, if you could go to Germany or you go to China, I'm quite sure you'll also be taking a picture or because you, and that's what they're also doing. So they also want memories. And so we do a lot of education. And at the same time, we, what we do is, I said, going into the community, it's not just, uh, we're trying to use tourism as a vehicle to, for, to positively uplift community, local communities, uh, teach local people in the communities to say that you don't just have to sell tomatoes and, um, you can start making baskets uh, on the routes that we always walk with a tourist. Uh, and then you can be able to, the tourists can, if they take a little souvenir, which they, so we go to a home of a local uh, Herrera lady or Damara lady and we pay an entrance fee as part of the money that the tourists have paid us to get into that house. And that way we also look at those uh, local people in the community that are having a positive whether they're looking they you know they, they're having a good story within the community but they do need assistance to be able to carry on the function whether it's a soup kitchen or whether it's a but you're looking at more sustainable that how do we empower positively the communities i said using tourism is the most powerful tool we can use having the mandela said a weapon we can use education to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, a weapon that we can use to advanced society but I think I believe that the poverty that we have and tourism touches can is, is a very strong uh, uh, obviously weapon is not a good word but a tool or a sector that can really help eradicate uh, local communities because the tourists want to go to those villages they want to go th you hear those stories and, and that's what we're trying to create that that is not just doing a business in the township in the local poor townships but at the same time we're looking at the poverty and that that tagline that says poor or previous disadvantaged communities and i'm saying that fast forward as we proceed we need to be able to start creating positive stories about these communities that were obviously having a negative connotation and use tourism to positively add value and create and build institutions that will, I mean, hotels or re proper restaurants or, and young people in that community can develop and then make those communities at, uh, attractive for a destination for tourism. And I think, yeah, so I've just touched an angle of like, everybody wants to go to the town, do business in the central business district and the people are going after the ocean view and i'm saying that i like the concept where i'm in the tourism industry where i have this passion to build a hotel in this local community and a proper restaurant where and hence that i'm in my generation also like nice things 
and make them, you know, create a, a platform where, and then now you're creating jobs, you're changing the face of the community because I think that's, I mean, if you go to the township where I'm from, you only see people starting a little informal business like uh, having a, uh, a car wash, a small little shop, you know, there's a lot of shop, home shops. Um, yeah, the people are preparing meals, but it's more in an informal way where there's not a proper toilet that you can be able to sit down. So we, I'm saying that uh, okay, we need to start changing that paradigm and inspire that the local communities can also, I mean, that's why we get more people to come there. So it's just, I'm just championing something. I'm mean, almost eight years, it's eight years now. So yeah, eight and a half years, yeah. Uh, my next question would be, how, do, how did you, curate or decide what exactly to show about the township? How do you design the tour? Uh, when I look at it, like when you go, you want to, when you want to go in a township, you want to feel the rhythm of the township. You want to feel, you know, like Mondesa, for instance, is like the heartbeat. And I said, let me, let's introduce you to the heartbeat in the melting pot of Swakopmund Mondesa Township. Um, obviously, the informal market, you know, is a good place to go to and to hear the story how our unemployed people are creating opportunities in the midst of no jobs. They are waking up early morning to create a job and to sell their food products and that's how they make a living. And now, uh, obviously, tell the story and how the government is trying to find solution to be able to help these informal uh, uh, economic players uh, so that they can also come into the mainstream economy because they are already entrepreneurial, but they just need assistance how to also get up. We were looking at the Herero culture of Namibia, which is a woman wearing the Victorian dress with a headscarf that is a symbol of a cow horn. And um, we do a home visit of this lady and then she narrates her story of her tradition. And at the same time, she also started a small daycare, which obviously, as an unemployed woman, she is able to, she's, she's having a, a employment for herself, and at the same time, employing two other girls. And then, but she's teaching these kids in Sheikh uh, house, and then we believe that when we come there, we want to be able to then uh, to buy a brick or to help the money that we interest we pay, so she can start building a brick institution. Um, or we go to the traditional food at Hafeni traditional restaurant where you, when you are on our tour, you get to eat local Namibian cuisine. Uh, the Oshifima, the Mopani worms, uh, the local spinach. From there on, and then, but then you go to the, the you know, like former settlement, see the shakes. So basically, we, we look at, you know, we take you to all the things that you, we believe that, that from the local music performances, uh, so it's basically a one by time three hour activity and once you finish or you come back you will be basically like oh dude oh wow okay I really understand now because we like a, a historian I, and the guides are from the local community so the tour guides all of them I train them but they are unemployed young people from the community now they are the ones that are taking you in the community where they grow up if it is in Swakopmoon you get Swakopmoon young people who never had a job before if it's in Wallfish Bay, we do the same. If it's, so I try to be able to, because it's much more special, and then that's what makes it more unique. You are with a native from that, a young person who is telling and taking, she, that young person will even take you to his own house. Unemployment rate in Namibia among young people is about 4 or 40%. Youth unemployment rate, and obviously national unemployment rate is about 32% or 28%. And, it, and then with the current economic climate, obviously, there's a lot of job um, companies closing down, so obviously the unemployment rate has skyrocketed again. But we're trying to look at how do we take young people off the street and introduce them to tourism. And so it's a component of like, as I said, a vehicle using tourism that to positively uplift local communities. And I think social responsibility and all the tour companies um, can really eradicate and help make sure. So yeah, so it's a, that's basically looking at that. Yeah, so...
So what I understand is that there are already some specific people in the community or groups in the community that you've spoken to over yeah. time yeah. and they allow people to come into their daily lives. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and you use uh, local guides, people from the yeah, community, from the community yeah. to take the to yes, tourists around. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And then, um, and then you don't like, you don't use the same person. You try to have different, you know, you have a Damara, like in DRC, informal settlement in Swakopmund. It's like Iberra, for instance. And um, there is no, uh, we used to drive there and a lot of tourists used to go, tour guides or tour operators will drive with their bus in this poor, of the poorest of community. And, but there's no return on investment in that community or empowering somebody from that community, which is obviously not very good because now you see poverty, but you don't even add value uh, as a tour company. You just take picture. So we now partnered up eight years ago with a, a lady called Katrina who, who started Dantaco uh, Arts and Craft Center. And uh, she brings unemployed women who have a skill to do, you know, all our African women, they know how to do the beads and they know how to do baskets and arts and craft. So this center, this woman will come there and then they do the, and then they will, the, in that shop, they will now have their, that become now a, a tourist shop with different products made. And then the person who made that product will put their name, this is made by, and the money, obviously percentage, some a small percentage stays to the center to sustain the center. But the money go back to the uh, lady who has made the bid, and then I bring the tourists there, and then we encourage other tour operators to continue to also support her. And as a result, it's a success story in that community. So you look at like, uh, you don't just drive through the community, we look at it, who can we partner up? But you don't just, once we know that that lady has now been, we've empowered her and we've helped her to come up and to connect her to the, to the industry or to other players, we look at another, you know, that we can steal, that we have more, um, that they can be, they must be able to self-sustain themselves and to also get into the tourism and to start also community tour business. And I think that lady has continued to do very well. And recently we were in Colma, France with her, and then she was selling her craft and arts. I mean, those are the type of plat the success stories that you can see that there is also, and then through my company, I have created and inspired uh, four of my employees that used to work for me. They are township tour operators. They've got their own businesses now. So it must be something that I'm doing very well, that I have um, young people uh, that are empowered to be my operation assistant who are able to see that they too can be able to start their own township tour business. And as a result, if you go into Swakopmund, four of those companies are young people there. They, they are business owners of their own after I've guided them through and, and believe in them that they can also run my business. But at the end of the day, they have now moved on and they are doing it on their own as well. Yeah. What was the transition from uh, being employed as a tour guide and s starting your own business? What did that look like? Um, how did you do it? How did you fund everything? And also, what did the first tour look like? Because by then you were just Heinrich, Heinrich Hafeni <laughs> yourself, yeah, right? Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, in 2011, okay, my last trip I did as an employer, it was July 2011. But originally I stepped out in uh, 2010, but due to the first few months, you're still trying to, is it really, yeah, start up. Um, when I start the business, it was, uh, I will fund my money that I will get as a salary. I will start already, you know, uh, preparing for my next adventure, which is now becoming an entrepreneur. So I'll build my uh, like a like a, um, a, a shabin type of a tourist shabin or a restaurant at my house, and I, I build a structure so that I can be able to host the tourists there. And uh, I remember back then I will now with the, I didn't have enough money, and then I had to have a small amount, so I needed a car, but I didn't I couldn't afford a car, so I had to use taxi, taxis. Uh, uh, 
to do my tours. When I have a, I'll go to the companies, they will not give me any business because I'm a new person and they don't trust that I can do the job. So I, because of my persistence, I say even one person, you just give me one person. I, so I started getting one person, one person or two person. So it's not very sustainable, but you are nobody. You have not started, you don't have anything. So the first two to three years, <laughs> was um, it was just because of the attitude and the energy and design say and they've been mentored by people with two companies already say when you start a business it's not going to be easy it requires a, a strong a man with a, or a strong heart to be able to see through your, your business vision that you have because I said township tour would be the only um, would be the, the, the what will get me into the tourism industry and because I tell the story from my own community. So I bought my bus with the assistance from my grandmother. It helped me with a little bit to a 1960 something micros. After I don't, having taxi is not very good for the, the, the other partners who want to give you business. When you come there with a taxi, they don't give you much, you know, uh, call it business because they say that you are not serious. So I invested in a bus, my first bus, uh, a combi. And uh, yeah, from there on, I started putting my logo there. So it was not really, to, I think it was just mental preparedness. I told myself when I resign, I'm going to start the great adventure of my life and become an economic player and uh, a contributor of my uh, generation in my country. And uh, as a result, I think it was just the attitude to say that I'm champion. And I'm going to go through the ups of the startup. I think obviously, we go to the bank asking for them to give us money to buy our bus. They reject us because you are now supposed to get another bus. The other bus was getting old. It was already old. So it was in terms of sustaining and continuing, we need now. And you get a lot of no's. And I think it was just the uh, attitude. And, uh, you know, when you are inspired by the greats and say that when I, in Africa, in these communities, can we get also young entrepreneurs who have, who can become a role model positive for the community and I think I think I was more inspired by that I'm a face that can inspire many of my uh, community youngsters and my generation that they you know if I can become if I can succeed my success will become success of uh, of many others and, uh, and that's why I continue to still believe I said that I success I need to succeed because if I don't succeed Many of my, they will look up to me, will also not succeed. So if I succeed, they will also succeed. So that's the motto. So going in an Africa needs champions, uh, positive role models with integrity, uh, that lead by example, build from scratch. And, uh, you know, that's where we are going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At what point did you decide to uh, to build the B and B and the restaurant. Oh, <laughs> okay. When I, I think I into, that's where the, the entrepreneur comes in. Where okay, uh, what happened is uh, my mother, when I was working as a road as a safari guide, was the one I would normally empower my mother when I'm with her. From Cape Town, we stop in Swakopee, my hometown. So I've got this 24 tourists that is on the truck, and they say, "Heini, we want to go to your house. We want to go to your village." And can you organize us that we can, we can, we want to eat local food, like, you know, and I, I started now organizing township tour while I was still working. And my mother will now, I will attach my mother to make traditional food. And I will do the township work because I'm from that community, but I was still employed and I'll ask 200 Namibian dollars from every client. And, and then that, my mother will make the food and organize the traditional dancers. And yeah, and then she passed away eight years ago. And uh, well, uh, I think 2011, the same year, when uh, I think that's when she passed on. And uh, what happened is, I said, okay, that was not, I'm not in the food business. That's not my thing, you know. I'm just doing township tours. And nobody could cook good like my mother. So I had to give now the food part to try to empower. There was always this empowerment, empower others. Even though they said you first empower, you must first empower yourself financially that you are stable, you could, so you can empower others. But mine was always first, they empower others. Even though I did not have, I was not even there. I was even 
a, a trying entrepreneur who was not even so I will now only get my business. You remember getting one person or two people, you don't generate, you know, and I said breadwinner in terms of and I'll obviously at night I'll be working as a shuttle, taking tourists, uh, working with lodges and hotels, taking tourists from one hotel to the other to be able to make extra money and I'll charge forty dollars or twenty dollars because the bread needs to be paid because the township tour was not bringing in money and uh, because yeah, I know it will take time before these other established uh, tour companies and operators will have faith in me that I can, you know, it's about, I know that the, the longer I continue to be persistent, the more they will, and I keep knocking on their door until, but I realized also that there was not enough, I was not generating, you know, I wanted to, like, how do I make a dollar every day? Even if I make a 10 Namibian dollar, and I like, and I realized that people that will make me traditional food, there was the hygiene component in the, you know, tourist, the food was, quality was not up to, I was, oh no. And then I decided to go back to my, my place that I make, and I said, I opened it, I saw one lady, I said, you come work for me, you'll be the one that will make, it was a toilet, clean the food. So we buy the food at the local market in the community, and then we prepare it at high class, high standard. That's how the traditional restaurant starts. And um, to be able to make sure that also to make, to grow, as, and then to also make at least something that you can bank every day, even a $10. With a township tour, you get two tours a week. Sometimes you probably just get one, sometimes maybe not. So, and I said, no, our, our businessmen try to make money every day. So I start a traditional restaurant. And um, the traditional restaurant today is the only traditional restaurant in the township. Of um, uh, and obviously, it's not been easy to establish one. <laughs> and uh, again, young entrepreneurs come up with ideas to be able to change and to bring. And I think I'm the person who like my cup of tea and cappuccino, and I always go to town. And and I said, why can we not have coffee or tea or nice, not the rough places like the shabins or the taverns that, where everybody's shouting and stepping on each other's foot. Can we not create, and I think the restaurant also is the model where I'm saying that I want us to be able to have this nice, um, the way we get it at the other uh, established uh, advantage places, we must bring that mentality also to the township. So I started working on trying to now, obviously where I am now, it's not the standard that I have. And I said, okay, let's start. But the aim is to be able to say that we can also have restaurants in the township we can also have top service in the township, clean environment where young people in the community, where so there's also Wi-Fi, you can also swipe. So those are the things that I started introducing and as I proceed, I started now. Also, this did not just happen. As I continue to now build my business, I continue to associate myself with, uh, to personal develop myself in terms of uh, participating in, in the national platforms. And I am a lover of uh, leadership studies. I like leadership. I like the word leadership. And, and I realize that because of the community, our communities and our nations are not advancing. It's because we have not been taught. Uh, we don't have, uh, lead, we've not been, leadership has not been taught for us what it is. And what is your role as a leader? And um, I saw opportunity to participate in the German GIZ Young Leaders Program in Zealand. Uh, it was a seven week program. And 2013, I, went nine, I was one of the nine young leaders that went, but it's leadership and business, the German way. And, and uh, 2015, I also got an opportunity to the Barack Obama Mandela here Washington Fellowship, Young African Leaders. I was part of the 500 Sub-Saharan African Young Leaders, um, a platform that will equip me and connect me to a, a new network of African um, contemporaries of uh, the continent which I want to utilize as I am inspired by them. And I said, we've got this network now, what do I do with it? But um, that's why I said, I'm appreciative what I heard about you guys. I was like, oh, cool, Africa. Um, but yeah, that is just to associate, to learn about the global village. And uh, at the same time, I would be also inspired again to continue to build on uh, the Afeni Tourism Namibia brand and um, branch out from Oswakopmund. Let's talk about um, 
I think there's an award I had written it down yes um, let's talk about the Hafeni tourism leadership and entrepreneurial award oh okay what I realized is uh, because of what I am passionate about and I say okay I want to be honored now as a new leader of tomorrow of the Grand Montana the Mandela Washington new leadership uh, you know uh, alumni gym and I said now I've been equipped I must also now inspire and recognize young people in my community through going to when the schools are inviting Hafeni I ask the schools who is the exemplary leader or entrepreneur at that school and as part of my company social responsibility we sponsor uh, the best female and male leader of that school an award that will of, uh, of their contribution exemplary because to inspire that these youngsters that uh, I think it's the same notion of um, it's just something that I started I said what is it that we do for how do we inspire and create in the next generation of leaders and uh, I started that it, it's just that it's, it's um, started off I started off yeah I started off just giving back as a said they asked me what is it that you can give back to the school uh, how do you and I said I want the best leader female best leader male a youngster and then also uh, because I'm an entrepreneur we need to create more entrepreneurs can we not ignite and I think I said, it's it's a combined one but I would love to that there must have one one we just have who's been exemplary leader and an exemplary entrepreneur so those are I think we need to be able to break it down but it's just something that I think yeah, the, this you know when I give these youngsters this leadership, uh, Hafeni, uh, Henry Hafeni, I don't know, I think my team have done it very well. Um, this you can see the smile and the and then they get their cash amount. The way you can as a token of we appreciate your contribution. Well, you, uh, our community, our country, because of you and your love of exemplary you know, leadership and. You know, the way you conduct yourself, many young people of your generation will continue to look to you. So we are just giving you a, that we recognize you and then you go and, you know, you continue to do great work and continue to be, I mean, you get, that's why you receive the leadership award because of your contact and how you lead by example. And I think it's just to ignite, um, to uh, ignite that spirit uh, in them uh, to tell her because when I do my motivation of speaking I said this is the future of our country and they are very important and I come from the same community and then when I was growing up there was no role models and uh, the young so the people that we look up to were guys that would do uh, shoplifting or criminals or gangsters in the 90s I mean they would drive nice cars and we want to be like them because there was nobody would tell us that you, you you can become the greatest Namibian that there will ever be and or somebody said I believe in you and I think that leadership one is more of like just that I believe in you I see greatness in you and you are what Namibia the positive role model or, you know anything that of those nice key you know, so it's just that uh, igniting yeah, that spirit, and we want to do more. And, and I think we want to create, and I think we need to create more academies in a, in a, not just in Namibia but in Africa, where we have a leadership academies, and uh, you know, teach these youngsters that you are, you matter, you, you know, you, you know, you can, you, you, are, you know, you, you, your, your, your positive participation. Um, can build a positive society. Uh, so I think that's something I'm going on that direction. Yeah. What would be your advice to young people in Namibia? I think um, my advice would be like just uh, look yourself in the mirror and uh, see, uh, you know, recognize that you are important, very important. Uh, recognize that you you know, you're, you know, you, that you are the example and uh, of what Namibia uh, can be if you play your part positively and, and that you tell yourself that you're going to become the, I think it's just that them, they must believe in themselves that they are important, they matter, and that they are not just another number of society. 
but they also need to do their homework in bettering themselves to become the greatest champion of their time and they must not compete with anybody. The only competition and that they must compete with is themselves. Um, but the end results must be that they became, become great ambassadors of them, positive ambassadors that adds value to advancement of a society. And that's the, more my message, positive, you know, stay with positive people that build you, that adds to your greatness. Young people, no matter whether they are five years old, six years old, I think that's where it, I think sometimes we always try to concentrate when they finish school at 18 or 20 at university, that's when we recognize that they are leaders. But I think that we need to be able to to shift it, to go back to the grassroots and tell this and treat these youngsters that they are important, that they matter. And that's the only way that I think that all of us in society can be able to create more positive youngsters of the future that will play a critical role to help society growth and eradicate poverty and high unemployment rate and all that that we have. And create more entrepreneurs, yeah. The new Obamas, and I think you guys, are, Kenya, you've done very well. Your, your ancestors have created a, a guy, what, what an example, you know, one of my great role models is uh, President Obama, you know, and I look at him and I say, that's me. That's the person I want to be. And then I, obviously, you look, and I, you look at yourself and I said, I want to be the best me that I will ever be. But obviously, you've got these positive role models in front of you. Well, I look at Kofi Annan, for instance, the late, and I will look at Nelson Mandela, and I'm like, obviously, somebody said, oh, Henrik, you are, are you an entrepreneur? Are you a politician? I said, no. I think, I don't know what the God is destined for me, but uh, for now, it says economic power will, uh, you know, you can be able to use the wealth that you generate to build society. And uh, I think we wish that many people who are having businesses can be able to really, the money that they generate in the communities they operate, they must build society, they must build the academies, they must build the sports ground, they must create a conducive environment for young people to, to thrive. So yeah, and that's, I'm one of them that I want, that's where I'm going, yeah. We've already talked about the restaurant, let's and the tours, yeah. let's talk a bit about the B&B. Okay, the, um, we've got a, I've got a, you know, like a part of being an entrepreneur, uh, it's about you moving out to other towns as well, other areas. And I think part of my vision was like always that I can see the Afeni tourism, Namibia brand in every strategic locations around Namibia, giving day activity specialists, yeah. you know, different cultures. I mean, whether the Kavango people, the Ovambo people. So we want to be able to connect and work together with young people in those different strategic locations around Namibia. Uh, my next, uh, obviously, business was uh, it is in Walfish Bay, Quisamon Township. Uh, obviously, Walfish Bay is our harbor town. And um, I obviously, again, just like Mondesa, there's no proper restaurant or a clean environment. Like, you know, I always look at that. We, we must build it. Okay, there's B&Bs and guest houses in the township, but I, I bring an element of traditional restaurant there, which actually enhanced now the community and people want traditional food they come to our fennies in Wolfish Bay and um, at the same time do the township tour where I got young person from the community there train him how to do township experiences so and then he's from there and um, from that we move on it's eight rooms yeah we got eight rooms uh, yeah on suit uh, yeah it was one of it but anyway at the end of the day I've always liked hotels and lodges and I said but uh, I'm also busy building a hotel, the first hotel in Mondesa. Um, um, Mondesa uh, Hotel and traditional restaurant, which is more a 25-room hotel. That's what I'm building. And, uh, and then we also moved to Vintuk now, Katutura Township. But I, I think it's just a step-by-step. Step. It's not necessary that you... One is... Yeah, I think it's just that spirit. So I'm an entrepreneur. I, and I must continue to evolve and I must continue to build. And, um, but as I said, I love Namibia, but I'm very much inspired by Africa. And I want to be able to, I'm playing, I'm, I'm participating together with African uh, Mandela Washington Fellow to create um, a forum for African entrepreneurs. Uh, obviously, we still look at the name as leadership or 
um, entrepreneurship forum, but it's more for business. Because I come from the chamber. I remember when I, in my early years, I would be leading the chamber of commerce. And at the same time, I would be the chairman, national chairperson of emerging tourism in Namibia. But I left that, but I said I want to put my effort in trying to be part and parcel of uh, an African uh, uh, you know, team that will be able to you know, create. I mean, you go to Europe and you see all these very well organized forums and we all Africans, we're meeting each other in Europe and I'm like, okay, that would be great to also, I know there's a lot of forums, but I'm just saying that it takes one man with a great vision and energy and passion to create something very strong. And I think when your partners like you guys, we are able to do that and have look at the World Economic Forum, how they make it top notch. And you look at the Crown Montana Forum and then we learn from the best so we can be able to look at all corners of the continent and be able to, you know, to, to partner up our, um, and find the um, in hand. I just feel like the time is now. And as I said, Africa, from Namibia to Africa. So you see me in Nairobi, do not be surprised. She should go and then like being another number of society is like uh, boring. But if you just the fact that you're thinking and and it's not easy. It's like obviously it's, it's like abnormal. It's like, it's like entrepreneurs. That's why you only have a certain small percentage. Sometimes you think about must I close down? Or must I open up? And I'm like, ah. But uh, but there's this mental preparedness. You tell yourself, and you're reaching the ultimatum. And like the first five years is to from a new startup, and then you're gonna. Make sure that in the five years you build a brand where nationally everybody recognizes you. Today, and then I, now I'm now in the next level. Next five years, that by the time I reach 10 years, I have hotel, I have lodges, I have the brand of 10 years. When I reach 10 years as a business, you come back and you come and look at what I've done. Because I want to tell the story, I say, what is it that you, how do you, how have you been able to evolve as an entrepreneur? And um, obviously showing the examples that we are transforming community. We have got the Afedi Hotel will be there. The Rawfish Bay establishment will continue to grow. The And then it's a franchise that we're looking at. And we would like, it's a model that is already recognized. And today, even last night, I went to the Tourism Association 30th anniversary and uh, built so much network with everybody. Business owners were all there. And it was, uh, I have to be there because as an entrepreneur, you must be in that platform. Or, you know, somebody, don't you, and I always move up and down to attend the platform. So don't be surprised if you, I'll be in Berlin for when you invite me for another business forum uh, to share. Uh, I don't know, whatever you believe we must share. Thank you. Did I do it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.